Welcome back. We are hunting a courser. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting a courser. I don't remember exactly where it is. I, I do know that the number goes up as I get closer and down as I get further away. So it's uh, like that, that kid's game. I can't remember what it's called, but you get that hot, warm, cold, right? Oh look, there's a Mirelurk over there shaking its stuff. Well, it was. Fifty-one, we're getting there. Mm, up, 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 up. Sixty-one. Sixty-seven. I don't remember exactly where this place is. Seventy-three. 75. My alert incoming. Okay, good job, dance. Mm. Huh? Uh, 78. We're getting closer, but I don't feel like going through the raiders. Come on, dance. Come with me. Come on. We'll go around. Just don't feel like dealing with them. Forget where this opens. In fact, I forget where the heck I'm going. All right. 82. Is it this building right here? The green one on my right? Yeah, green tech genetics and I'm at 93. So yeah, I'll bet you anything. I have a feeling Dance did not follow me, but it's okay. We're here now. He'll teleport in. <laughs> um, looks like there's been a battle already. Don't leave anything behind. That's a dead gunner. If the courser's in here, yeah, that would make sense actually. If there were gunners in here and then the courser came in here. And, uh, yeah. Do you like my stuff? Whenever I, uh, whenever I stop for a minute, the outfit I'm currently wearing turns me automatically invisible, like a courser. <laughs> hmm, yeah. Something's definitely going on here. For sure, dance. I mean, this is crazy. Look at this. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't see anything. She's invisible. They see dance though. Oh, now he's now they see me. Dang. Go down. Shoe corporal. Don't bother me. Shoot, Corporal. Don't bother me. Ugh. Let's get that right now. Put a stop to this. Dang, turret. Dang, turret. There's another one. Um, Dance, you might want to follow me, dear, you know, instead of just staying out there getting shot by turrets. I'm just saying. Hmm, all right. Are you here for the sin? That's not why I'm here. If you're not here for the sin, then you're here for me. What do you want? I need what's in your head. That you cannot have. 
What I'm wearing here is the X03 Predator armor. It is from a mod. Got him. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. You're welcome. My institute designation is K198, but I prefer Jenny, so yes, I'm a synth, if you hadn't already guessed. I knew they'd send a courser. I just didn't think you'd find me so fast. I think I would have lost him too, but then I was captured by these mercenaries and all this happened thanks again for your help i'm gonna look for supplies before heading out and before you ask no i don't need any more help the commonwealth is unforgiving i need to make it on my own or i'm dead maybe we'll meet again under better circumstances i hope we do okay okay jenny All right, we got the chip. Back to the memory the den. The glowing sea, Virgil. What happened? I found Virgil. He has a way inside the Institute. But I need a code from a Corsair chip. A Corsair chip? You fought a Corsair? Oh my god. Unfortunately, I can't help you. I've worked on a lot of synths, but never a Corsair. I don't know what that chip does, let alone how to decode it. But there are people who might. I work with a group that, well, they're the only ones I know that even have a chance at cracking Institute security. They are called the Railroad. Thanks, Doctor. How do I find them? I can't contact them directly. They usually come to me when they have a synth that's escaped the Institute and wants new memories. But I do have a code phrase. Some kind of clue if I ever needed to find them on my own. Follow the freedom trail. All right. I'll find them. Good luck. I'm sorry what I have is so cryptic. But hopefully you can figure things out as you go. An A? Some sort of code. Anything useful? You know how much I miss you, but it's too dangerous. If you stay in Diamond City, at least I'll know you're safe. If your mind's really made up, then be careful. Travel at night, stick to the river, and whatever you do, don't go into the common. Hmm. 
Mm, under the church. What's this? Huh. It spins. Starts with R. we go. Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my questions. Who the hell are you? Why don't you tell me who you are first? In a world full of suspicion, treachery, and hunters, we're the Synth's only friends. We're the Railroad. So answer my question. I followed the Freedom Trail looking for the Railroad. I'm not your enemy. If that's true, you have nothing to fear. Who told you how to contact us? I helped Carl out of a jam. He knows a guy who knows a guy, and they hooked me up with a lead. We'll look into that. Last question. Why are you here? I tracked down and killed a courser at Green Tech Genetics. Now I need help. Breaking the code on his courser chip. You have what? This is not a joking matter. I didn't know we were having a party. What gives with my invitation? Oh, I see you invited the Courser Killer. Nice. Deacon, you're late. You're saying this intruder actually killed a Courser? Single-handedly? <laughs> oh, that'd give even Gloria a run for her money. Newsflash, boss. This lady is kind of a big deal. If you're done interrogating her, you might want to show this Courser murdering machine a little courtesy. Just a thought. I owe you an apology. Anyone who kills a courser is good in my book. I'm Desdemona, and I'm the leader of the railroad. Hopefully, we can work something out. What you're asking for puts us in a tricky position. Des, we need to let her in. She's got an intact courser chip, for God's sake. That violates our security protocols. To hell with that. She killed a courser. There's no way she's working for the Institute. We're letting you into our headquarters. You're the first outsider ever to be given this privilege. We'll discuss the details about your chip inside.
Oh, hey, Dad. You need something? Tom, our visitor here has a courser chip. Whoa! For real? Oh, man, it's been ages! Right. Some ground rules. Tom can get you the code, but once he's done, we get the courser chip. Fine. It's yours. All right. Tom, make it happen. All right, little courser chip. Let's have the circuit analyzer take a crack at you. We're in. Chip accessed. Just poke the analog connectors a little. What? Oh, man, don't, don't, don't crash. Hold it together. Memory hiccup. Here it comes. Encryption algorithms. All right. All right, we're still running. Oh, man. They've added more decimals to the last cipher. This is gonna be... Come on, baby. Show me that pattern. Where is it? Wait. They're using the same logarithmic function as the key generator. Oh, man, we got lucky. I got you, you institute bastard. I got you. All right, software in. Come on. Show me that sweet bass number. Come on, baby. Yeah, we got it. We got the code. <laughs> Let me load that onto the hollow tape for ya. Good work, Tom. Hey, yeah, but I'm not sure our luck will hold up next time, Des. Start working on the rest of the chip. And you. I'd love to work with you more. Let me know if you're interested. But to be crystal clear, if you use that data and discover anything involving the Institute, you share it with us first. Otherwise, our relationship will be in jeopardy. You gotta be careful, man. The Institute is everywhere. I don't like being threatened or bossed around. Work with each other. I need to make sure that we're on the same page. There's more going on you than know you know. What synth is, right? Trust me. I've heard rumors. What are they really? The Institute created them. Synthetic humans. They're mostly organic, part machine. Somewhere along the line, they became more than just constructs. They think, they feel, and they act just like you and me. The Institute treats synths as property, as tools. Why does the Institute treat them that way? They're playing God, tinkering with things they don't fully understand. From that lofty vantage, it's easy to deny their creation's very humanity. That sounds like slavery. Exactly. So we seek to free the synths from their bondage. Give them a chance at a real life. I have a question. The only question that matters. Would you risk your life for your fellow man? Even if that man is a synth? Could you elaborate? Answer with your gut on this. Your heart. If you had to put yourself in danger to save a synth, would you do it? I risk my life for people every day. Makes no difference to me if it's a human or a synth. Well said. Someone with your skills, your beliefs, normally we'd try and recruit you. But right now, we don't have the time to train up a new agent. There are, however, other valuable ways you can contribute. And in turn, we can help you. See Deacon for details. You're free to go. No, thank you. But thank you. Anyway, thanks for asking. Hope you didn't mind the reception. When you tango with the Institute, you gotta be careful when someone new gets on the dance floor. Your leader was just being cautious. Caution can often be misinterpreted as hostility. I've seen it happen before. Exactly. Kind of killed our chance at a friendly first impression, though. But it's all good now. I vouched for you, nobody got shot. Still, I would consider it a close personal favor if you didn't sell us out to the Institute. Thanks. So, tell me, why did you vouch for me? In our little outfit, it's my job to know things. And with everything you've done, it's clear you're capable. A dangerous enemy. And I'm betting, a valuable ally. But why the trust? You can't be taking it all on faith. I've heard a lot of things about you. Enough to want to give you a chance. So, Des wants me to make you a tourist. That's what we call someone who helps out with the odd job here and there. What a waste. 
I'm just gonna come out and say this. The railroad needs you. You sure you need me? Desdemona didn't seem to care. She's just thinking of the time and manpower it would take to train you. And if you were some hick from the burbs that didn't know your ass from a rocket launcher, she'd be right. But I'm betting someone like you just needs a few pointers. And a target. I'm not sure if I want to work with you guys. Here's my one and only sales pitch. Do you support synth freedom? I'm not asking if you die for them, just if you agree that they shouldn't be slaves. Whether it's synths or humans, I'm against slavery. Follow up. Would you be willing to risk your life to stop the Institute and their nefarious plans? I can't believe I just said that. Someone has to stop them. Excellent. Every one of us believes in synths getting a fair chance, but some agents aren't really risking their necks for that. They put their asses on the line to hurt the Institute, and the Railroad's all right with that. If you're fighting the Institute, you need all the help you can get. Most Railroad agents are fully committed to the cause, but some agents want revenge even more. I get that. Sales pitch over. If you want to walk away, here's your chance. Still not interested. Maybe when you see more out there, you'll be back. The Institute has a habit of stepping on people's toes with a jackhammer. Good luck. Yeah, no dance. Dance hated that. Wasn't sure I'd see you again. Hmm. You managed to get what you need? Sure did. I have the code. Suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You did get rid of Kellogg after all. Not too much of a leap to take down a courser. How'd you manage to get it decoded? The railroad helped me. Oh god, those kooks. I would have expected they'd be too busy trying to liberate vending machines or setting computer terminals free or... Sorry. They just have something of a reputation. You're not the only one who's been busy. I did the best I could. From memory and things I've overheard through the years. Came up with some schematics for you. Wasn't easy. These hands are ridiculous. Fine motor skills have gone to shit. Here's the symbol explanation. You need to build a device that will hijack the signal the Institute uses to teleport coursers and send you instead. You know the craziest part of the design? That classical music station. That's the carrier signal for the relay. All the data's on harmonic frequencies. You've been hearing it all along. I want to be clear that this isn't my area of expertise. I was bioscience, not engineering or advanced systems or anything. Bioscience? Advanced systems? Divisions within the Institute. Specialized groups working on various projects. It'll make sense later. But if you can build this device and make use of that code, you should be able to override the signal from the Institute's relay, can you? I mean, can you build it? You have people that can help. This is a lot for one person, even you. I've got it covered. Good, good. Because you've got to make it in there. For both our sakes. And don't you forget our agreement. I've helped you as best I can. If you make it in there, you find that serum. It's my only hope for ever being. Normal. So you find it. Now go on. Take these and get to work. You do whatever it takes. Call on whoever you know to help you. I think I know just the person.
Mm. Let's see. Found old terminal in repair shop. Needed repair. Got it working. Hard to type. Fingers too big. Still looking for materials for serum. Only hope now. Materials hard to find. Glowing C2 damaged by war. Did not fully consider implications. Was only thinking of survival. Safety from anyone trying to follow. People in Crater may be able to help. Mentally unstable, but apparently immune to radiation. Haldren would love them. Hoping they have larger keyboard. Children of Adam cannot help. They are just as starved for materials, but are too proud to admit desperation. Occasionally losing feeling in extremities. Slight gaps in memory. Trying to remain positive, but if condition deteriorates. And need to reproduce serum soon. Serum can't be made here. Tools unavailable. Hands too clumsy to perform any delicate actions. Typing getting harder. Makes me too angry. No way back in to get original sample of serum. Must consider that my condition may be permanent. Yes. I'd advise against breathing in these fumes. They smell awful. Mm, nope. Gotta wait till I handle this then before I talk to you. Time for an outfit change. Mm, much better. Hmm, what's this? Proctor Ingram's terminal. Work orders. Hmm. Type repair completed internal air conditioning unit. Air conditioning unit had burned out its condensing coil from overuse. Need to remind the soldiers that they can't constantly run the damn thing 24 hours a day. Copper condensing coils are tough to replace, so had to make do with homemade version. Unit should last a while longer with moderate use. Han Mr. Handy Cultivation Unit Got called down to lab area and their Mr. Handy was trying to cut through everything in sight. Was almost ready to get some soldiers to shoot the thing before it hurt someone. But it tried to cut through the bulkhead and burned up its motor. Pulled the logic unit and it looked like an old factory defect on the cultivation models. I've blown out the firmware and rewrote the instruction set to fix the issue. Replaced the motor and put the unit back into service. Ventilation filter system. Installed a ventilation system over the rear laboratory space to help Naraya vent the stench of her mole rats to the exterior of the ship. Had to cut a few holes in the inner and outer plating, but triple welded everything to make sure it all stays tacked down. System's on a timer, so it shouldn't draw too much power from the ship's reserves. Was happy to help, since I could smell her rats all the way down here. Vertibird gunship, Vorpal. Vorpal threw a rotor on its last landing, so I hitched a ride with Spatha and headed out to the crash site. Pilot did a hell of a job bringing his bird down in one piece. All I had to do was recover the rotor and set it back in place. There's some minor plating damage on the starboard thruster, but I'll hammer it down when Vorpal gets back to the airport. Was nice to get away from the Pridwin for once. Hopefully I can convince Kells to let me head out with some future patrols. Sewage lines. 
I don't know what the heck the mess hall is serving, but the sewage lines were completely clogged. It was so disgusting. I had to borrow one of my buddy's power armor helmets to keep the smell from making me puke. I think I'd rather scrape rust off the exterior hull plating next time. <laughs> I don't blame you. Poor Ingram. Internal Mail, Maxon. After having a long discussion with both Lancer Captain Kells and Knight Captain Cade, I've decided to deny your request for field service. While I understand that you've modified your power armor frame to accommodate your injury, and Cade has personally given it his seal of approval, I don't feel it's worth risking your life. You of all people should appreciate that machines can break down. In your particular case, if your frame fails while you're in the field, it could place you and anyone with you in extreme danger. Please don't take this personally, Ingram. I can't afford to lose you. My decision is final. I'm sorry. Cade. I'm guessing you've already read that Maxon is denying your fieldwork request. I did everything I could to talk him out of it, but he just wasn't convinced. If there's anything you need, even if you just want to talk about it, my door is always open. I hate to bring this up now, but you really need to head down here and let me tweak your leg hydraulics. Last time you were here, you complained that the shock absorbers weren't doing their job, dampening your impacts from walking. Well, I was able to tweak some numbers, and I'd like to look them over with you. After all, you're the expert when it comes to mechanical engineering. So, there. Now you have two excuses to visit me in the sick bay. I hope to see you in here soon. Tegan. I've got a little surprise for you. Remember how you told me about those sweets you loved so much? You know, the ones that looked like little colored discs? Well, Quinlan's last sleep, sweep and retrieve patrol just came in. And they found a whole roll of them. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, I don't know what will. Now, how about heading over to my quarters this evening? And we can split it together. Don't worry. I'll be a complete gentleman. I just hate seeing you storm all over the repair bay with that damn scowl on your face. And I think this will cheer you up. Maxon. Now that Captain Kells has transferred all of your materials down to the surface and the gantry construction has started, I think it's time we had to talk about the timeline of your new project. I'd like you to head up to the command deck as soon as possible so we can discuss the details. We have far too many resources tied up in this operation to allow anything to slip through the cracks. We have a war to win, Proctor, and I strongly believe that this ambitious project of yours will be our rallying cry. Poor Ingram. Now, I'm sure you've deduced that our arrival in the Commonwealth wasn't coincidental. We're here because of a unique energy reading recorded by Paladin Dance's recon team, according to our scribes. The reading indicated a level of technology that only the Institute could achieve. The moment this information came to light, our mission became clear. The Institute, and everyone responsible for the creation of the synths, must be eliminated at all costs. To accomplish this goal, we need to locate the Institute's headquarters. I've had our scribes meticulously searching the Commonwealth, but they've come up empty-handed. The only logical explanation is that they've gone underground. That's where we need your help. I have a way to infiltrate the Institute, using a device called a signal interceptor. So it appears we share a common goal. I'm pleased that you've chosen to build the device with the Brotherhood. Now, indulge me for a moment by satisfying my curiosity. Tell me why you're so eager to get into the Institute. I think... 
I think they're the ones that kidnapped my son. The Institute preys on the weak to further their own ends. Together, we'll make them pay for their crimes. I'll call ahead and brief Proctor Ingram. Report to the airport, and get to work on your project right away. Elder Maxson said you'd help me build the signal interceptor. So, looks like you're calling the shots around here now, huh? All right, I'll bite. What does your new miracle device do? Did you know the Institute has a teleporter called the Molecular Relay? Take a look. Molecular... what? No. Molecular transmission via encrypted RF waves? Okay, even I have to admit, that's genius. This explains why we've been picking up anomalous energy readings all across the Commonwealth. Not to mention how they get their tin soldiers to come out of the damn walls. And this little beauty allows you to literally hijack a return signal. Instead of grabbing the intended target, it grabs you instead. Impressive. Well... You definitely know your stuff. Damn right I do. It's difficult to make out all the details here, but I'm thinking you can get started by building a stabilized reflector platform. It's gonna take a cargo hold full of high-grade metal, but I'm sure that we have plenty of it right here at the airport. Can you give me a list of what I'll need to build this platform? Of course. Here's a list of everything you need to find. You're also going to need a massive power source to get the signal interceptor running. Take prisoners. Any luck building the platform yet? Yes, I'm ready to build the rest of it. Good. Let's move on then. Here's a list of everything we'll need. Now I know some of that might as well be in Greek, so I'll be around if you have any questions. Looks good, Ingram. I'll get to work right away. Hm. I wish I had your confidence. Oh, one last thing before I forget. It's important that all the components are wired together so all the pieces are on a single grid. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. If you need any help, I'll be over at the build site making some adjustments and calculations. I'd wish you good luck, Knight, but I think we're both going to need it. Jackson's waiting to talk to you, and I'm not Elder. pulling the switch again. Remarkable he work, Knight. The signal interceptor appears to be complete. Are you ready to put it to the test? Absolutely. I'm ready to go. Your confidence is an inspiration to us all. That being said, this is the first time we've attempted to directly adapt Institute technology. When we throw that switch, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. God willing, you'll end up inside the Institute, and the mission can continue. Nothing's gonna stop me when I'm so close to the answers I'm looking for. Eager to get inside, huh? Good. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Once you've entered the Institute, we expect to lose contact. So it's imperative you remember everything I'm about to tell you. About ten years ago, the Brotherhood began recruiting civilian scientists from the Capital Wasteland to assist with various projects. During this process, we were able to obtain the services of Dr. Madison Lee a noted mind in the field of nuclear engineering. How did the Brotherhood meet Dr. Lee? She was part of a civilian project in the Capital Wasteland that the Brotherhood appropriated. It wasn't difficult to convince her to stay. That said, Dr. Lee's contributions to our cause were instrumental in maintaining order in the Capital Wasteland. After some time, she developed differences with the Brotherhood and exiled herself to the Commonwealth. We're fairly certain that her intent was to make contact with the Institute. What sort of differences? Although she was working with the Brotherhood of Steel, she never formally joined as a scribe. After the Capital Wasteland was secured, she objected to the Brotherhood's continued military presence there. I think she assumed we would just walk away from it all. She was wrong. Your mission is simple. Once you're inside the Institute, we want you to track down Dr. Lee's whereabouts. 
If you find out that she's still alive, make contact with her and convince her to return to the Brotherhood of Steel. There's a special project we're working on, and it needs her attention. What's this project that needs her attention? Dr. Lee previously worked on a potent weapon for the Brotherhood of Steel. We'd like her to continue where she left off. That's all I can tell you. Listen to me, Knight. I'm well aware that you're risking your life going into the Institute blind. Just keep your mind on the mission. And don't let anything they say sway you from your duty. Good luck. Dr. Ingram. I've checked and rechecked everything. I think the signal interceptor's ready to go. Are you? Let's do this. All right. Head up onto the platform and we'll see if I can find a signal to lock onto. The device doesn't work from over there. You have to be on the platform. Let's see. Relays dialed in. Beam emitters warmed up. Everything looks green. Let me start scanning for the signal. Cross your fingers. I'm inputting the code now. Wow, there's a heck of a lot of interference and ghosting. It's gonna take a minute or two to lock in. By the way, this little trip you're taking is a heck of an opportunity to find out as much as we can about the Institute and what they're up to. I put a clever little program on this holotape that'll scan their network and download anything it finds. If you place it in any terminal down there, it'll do the rest. Bring it back to me and I'll see if I can make sense of whatever it found. Well, well, looks like we have a winner. RF wave capture complete. Ramping the emitter. 60%, 80%. Emitter spiking, but steady. All that's left is to throw the transmit switch. Transmitting in three, two, one. Stay safe, soldier. I wondered if you might make it here. You're quite resourceful. I'm known as Father. The Institute is under my guidance. I know why you're here. I'd like to discuss things with you face to face. Please, step into the elevator. I can only imagine what you've heard, what you think of us. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves to humanity's survival. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, 
a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy, and our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too much at stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific very personal reason. You are here for your son. Sean? Huh? Yes, I'm Sean. Sean? Oh my god. It's really... It's really you. Who are you? Sean, it's... it's me. I'm your mom. Father! What's going on? What's happening? Sean! Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? What's going on? Father? Father! Sean, honey? What do you want me to do? I don't know you. Go away! Father! Father, help me! There's someone here! Help me! Who is Father? Where is he? Father? Father, help me! She's trying to take me! Father? Father, help me! Sean, S923, recall code Cirrus. Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am Father. Welcome to the Institute. Give me Sean. The real Sean. Right now! I know. I know. You've gone to such lengths to find him. I'll make this very simple. Where is my son? He's here, in the Institute. Closer than you think. But I need you to realize that this situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well, your tenacity and dedication have been... Re it's good to finally meet you. After all this time, it's me. I am Sean. I am... your son. How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the sun you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not ten, but sixty years? That is the reality, and here I am. Raised by the Institute, and now its leader. But why? Why take a child? Why take you? 
Ah, now that's the question, isn't it? Why me? At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being. Walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. So the weird science experiments needed specimens. That's why they took you? In a manner of speaking, yes. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me, after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. And you've... you've been down here the whole time? I have. Yes. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Kellogg. He worked for you? Kellogg. He was an Institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? Would you have preferred that I turned him loose on the Commonwealth? At least keeping him on a short leash kept the collateral damage to a minimum. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute, but his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you, us, to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to ease your mind So, you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The Institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future. No matter what those above ground might think of us. They need your help, Sean. It's rough up there, to say the least. Oh, we've tried that. Surprised? The Institute once tried to help create a stabilized Commonwealth government. It ended in bickering, infighting. It was a disaster. No. We look after our own now. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. What else can I say 
to ease your mind. Your father. He never got to see you grow up. Yes. What happened to him was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems what happened to him was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret, and asking what if more often. But what matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. I know there's more for us to discuss, but the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. And now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? You want me to stay here in... in the Institute? Yes, that is what I propose. Is it so hard to imagine? The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. How can you say that? How can you be so dismissive of all those people? Everything they've done. Because it is the simple truth. And I believe you know it too. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interest at heart. Will you take that chance? Are you sure you want this? Yes, I am. It would benefit us both to work together. All right. Thank you. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You'll want to introduce yourself to the Division Heads. Dr. Fillmore in Facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB, Dr. Holdren in Bioscience, and finally Dr. Lee in Advanced Systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. Well, let's see what it's really like. What's in here? Yes. Kellogg's occasional presence continues to unnerve the others. At first, I thought they were merely intimidated by his confidence and arrogance, or perhaps even afraid of his general being. Kellogg is, after all, a killer. But as I've continued to witness their reactions, gauge their sidelong glances, I've detected something else. Something I probably should have anticipated. Jealousy. Kellogg is a living memorial to a forgotten program. He is an augmented human being, a cyborg really, and the benefits he has received cannot be denied. But really, the scientists here could not care less about enhanced reflexes or greater combat efficiency. No, the cause of their envy is... Something more practical, more primal. His enhanced life expectancy. 
Just how long will Kellogg live if he passes naturally, however unlikely that may be? It's hard to say. He's already more than 100 years old, older certainly than any other human in the Commonwealth. His complete physiology has been altered. Perhaps he'll make it to 150, maybe even 200. Let the petty have their petty jealousies. Kellogg is a living testament to the ingenuity and superiority of the Institute, and I take no small pleasure in knowing that must irritate him to no end. Bioscience. Hydrobon hydroponics programs functional. FEV lab offline. Robotics. Synth output nominal. Production materials fully stocked. Advanced systems. Child Synth Project under quarterly review. Weapons Diagnostics ongoing. Phase 3 behind schedule. SRB. Director Zimmer still offline. Above ground operative terminated. Retention programs functional. Pattern recognition algorithms ineffective. Facilities. Power output maxed. Air water recycling systems functioning normally. The wait continues. AO can only confirm sightings outside Vault 111 and again in Diamond City sometime later. What that means, I'm not sure. Will we actually meet? Was this all for nothing? No, not nothing. I will have learned valuable things about myself, my past either way. I cannot afford to let emotion get in the way. I must simply observe and record. I'm told Kellogg has gone offline. Strangely, I find myself thinking of Dr. Walker. He had such high hopes for Kellogg, such faith in the implants and what they could mean. I still regret I still regret eliminating that project. But I know where it would have led us. Walker was never shy about his goals, and too many others were starting to listen. In the end, I believe I was justified. The Institute is about preserving humanity, not some bizarre amalgamation of biology and technology. I'm not liking what I'm reading. Nope, don't like that. Third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned, the phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Oh, I don't know. Most of them have lasted long past their projected lifespans. If you ask me, they were built pretty well. I can't argue with that. Even so, I'm ready to see the full Gen 3 roll out. There we go. All set. Unit, you can return to duty. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks again. Of course. Mm. We're all looking forward to working with you. Hmm. Reporting. It was probably just a glitch in the nervous system. The fine motor control software that was an update. If it were just a limb twitching but your eyes were moving as well. Involuntary twitching and rapid eye movements while standing can only mean one thing. You just don't want to admit to this. If you're about to look into one of your things about artificial symptoms and feeding of the soul, don't bother. I've heard enough of them. I've been down from them, but we can't just ignore the symptoms. If a thing can go, why can't it have a soul? If a sin has a soul, then it is a real person by every standard. Of course it is far more comfortable to think of them as a machine, so we can do what we want with them. If you disapprove of the work we do here, I'm simply trying to open everyone's eyes to new possibilities. Well, it's an unwanted distraction. We're men of science. We do well to remember that. 
Excuse me, Doctor. You've arrived at a momentous time. Our weapons are a true breakthrough. The culmination of centuries of research. It's no exaggeration to say that they're superior in almost every way to human beings. What makes them superior? The list of improvements is exhausting. I can talk for an hour and still not cover all of it. Imagine what you could accomplish if you could live without fear of hunger or disease. Imagine what you could create if you could spend every waking moment of your life as you saw fit. With no need of sleep. Like I said, a momentous time. Okay. You're here. Glad you made it. Hi, Doc. Ah, it's you. You're finally with us. I'd just like to apologize for any trouble our sense may have caused for you on your way here. They, of course, couldn't be told of your identity. And they have very specific protocols for protecting themselves and institute interests. Most of which I designed myself. Not to make problems for you, though. I, uh... Will you be staying with us then? Yes, of course. Ah, good. Sean is most pleased, I'm sure. He's been quite anxious to have you with us. If you require anything, especially as it pertains to Sits, please let me know. Hmm. Tell them what they want to hear till I know who I'm dealing with. Interesting. Upgrade implementation. Huh. Interesting. Upcoming projects, motor reflex response time improvements, targeting software package upgrades, complete transfusion to replace type 17101 synthetic blood with type 9010, more rapid clotting and improved infection resistance. I see. Access logs. So just the list of who's been in here looking at stuff. Interesting. Project updates. As you are all aware, from time to time, one of our Gen 3 synths assigned to surface duty will malfunction and go off assignment. While only a rare occurrence in the past, in recent months we have seen the number of losses rise noticeably. Dr. Ao has opened an investigation into this matter, and I must ask that you all give him your full cooperation as he looks into this troubling issue. Please answer his questions as completely as you can, and provide Dr. Ao with any logs, materials, or other items he requests. With your help, I'm sure we can resolve this matter quickly. Thank you. Father. Per Father's plans, as discussed at the recent Directorate meeting, we will soon begin to phase out our Gen 1 synth units within the Institute with the intention of regulating all remaining units to surface duties only. Our first generation synths have served admirably and exceeded their design specification in virtually every category. But the remarkable breakthroughs in synth design and production that have led to our latest, more aesthetically pleasing models herald a time for change. Over the next several years, we expect to replace all Gen 1 units with Gen 3 units, and in time, we will enact a similar plan with the Gen 2 units as well. As we look toward the future, let us also honor the memories of those whose hard work and innovation made the synths possible, 
and let us never forget the singular vision that challenged our forebears and that drives us today. Mankind redefined. Mr. or Dr. Alan Benet. Overriding directive to not alter our sense basic functioning notwithstanding, Father is granted clearance for a rather unique project. In select Gen 3 units, the synthetic brain is indeed capable of accepting specific enhancements to the visual cortex, basal ganglia, and right parietal cortex. The result is substantially improved combat effectiveness due to two factors. An increased understanding of weapon accuracy to the extent that the combatant can actually visualize the percentage of effectively hitting targets or smaller areas on those targets. An altered sense of perception that mimics the effect of slowing or even stopping time. Recommend we commence surgery and field trials so appropriate operatives in the near future. Hmm. Interesting. What do you do here? I'm head of the sanitation department. Although not really. Officially there is no such department. You see, uh, my title is sort of an inside joke. <laughs> Very funny. It's nice to meet you. Wait, me? Really? Well, thank you. That's that's very nice of you to say. It's your job to find out. Now hold still. And there. All done. You can return to your duties and remember to record every symptom you experience in detail. I hope I'll prove a useful test subject for you, doctor. Mm-hmm. They're experimenting this on the sense. We still can't cure the common cold. It must make you proud Hi. to see all that Once Father you've has done. Once you settle in, I'll want to do a physical built. and get a file going on you. No hurry, though. You're the doctor here? Everyone's a doctor here. But if you mean physician, then yes, I'm about as close as we got to one. How about you take some time to get comfortable, learn the lay of the land and such. In the meantime, you come see me if you need to get patched up. We'll do that checkup when you're good and ready. Take care of yourself, so I don't have to. They're not just planning on killing them all off. They not just enslaving them, they're also running experiments on them? Nothing. At this point, she's just doing it for fun. Hmm. Accesses who accessed it like a log. Research proposals. Proposal build on existing institute research into implants cybernetics to augment human capabilities and lifespan. Previous program met with limited success in a single subject. Using a broader array of subjects and new techniques could prove highly effective. Approval rejected, director. Notes. None given. Cold fusion. Divert time and materials from current phase 3 research to exploring the possibility of sustainable nuclear reactions through electrochemical processes at or near room temperature. Pre-war work on the subject yielded no concrete results. Advances in technology could potentially make it possible. Approval. Rejected. Lee M. Notes. Evidence suggests this is, and always will be, a pipe dream. Miniaturization. Modification to relay assembly allowing for extra parameters when rematerializing. 
specifically to explore recalibrating object size and density. Imagine if it were possible to use the relay to shrink someone down to the size of an insect, or even smaller. Approval. Rejected. Watson. E. Let's keep things out of the realm of science fiction, please. Plasma Weaponry Pre-war plasma weapons exist, albeit in a somewhat primitive state. Samples have been collected, with work from a dedicated research team. Said weapons could be improved upon dramatically. Approval Pending. Lee M. Something to consider after Phase 3 is complete. Hmm. Personal notes. Dr. Lee has been spending more and more time in her lab with the kid. Synth. Thing. It's creepy and I can't help but wonder if she's getting a little too attached. Evan has rejected my last 12 proposals. I don't know how to get through to that man at all. Well, that was productive. Not everything you've heard about the Institute is true. Give us a chance. Yes? Hi. Yeah? In case anyone didn't mention it, quiet time runs from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I used to work exclusively on the hey, same projects, but since you're new here, you should take time to learn our safety pursuits. procedures. And the sooner the better. Rules create order, and order promotes efficiency. Words any former soldier can appreciate. A woman who understands the need for discipline will be a valuable addition here. I had some handbooks made up, but that was years ago. I'll see about getting one to you. Sounds good. Take care, then. Huh? Huh? If you ask me, we're only scratching the surface with the latest synths. Nice. One day, I'll design a more efficient reactor to replace that old clunker in the basement. This is day eight of trial six. The last week has been very productive, but exhausting. I yes. think we'll need a break after this. Benet, the response of is course, now almost identical to really expectations. Sean, Some of the most none of his memories are in there. That, even now, would be a step too far. It's starting to have an effect on the team, I think. I know I've been caught up in the moment once or twice. Just a second or two. Forgetting that he's not a real boy. Still, I think we'll need to consider restricting him to the lab only for the moment. I'm well aware that others are, are put off by his presence. <laughs> if I were slightly more arrogant, I might consider that a sign of success.
Objective, extend the maximum range and accuracy of the induction channel for long distance engagement. Results, a great induction channel throw was attached via a design incorporating a sturdy superconducting table to boost the barrel itself. A longer barrel makes the weapon more unwieldy overall, but the improvements in effective range and accuracy are more than worth it. Status success. Increase rate of discharge without exceeding heat and power draw thresholds. By stacking multiple rotation co coils, a stable alternating pulse was achieved, allowing for a higher rate of fire at the cost of reduced bolt strength. Success. Increase per shot control with a rapid fire rate to accommodate 1530-777-1232-0. Internal quart stabilizers were found to have a dampening effect on recoil, and as a result of this, the barrel can... I can't... Oh, there we go. Also be light, lighter in weight than standard. A good result. I had a little trouble seeing that. Arc diverging attachment. Provide a viable alternative barrel for close quarters combat. By transferring the main laser channel through a diffraction checker with multiple angularly offset emitter ports, several bolts can be thrown in a spread pattern without too much of a loss in stopping power. This barrel has the potential to be very effective in close quarters. Hmm. Develop a variant for crowd control as further ranges. At further ranges. Calibrating the induction emitter to deposit a charged field at the impact location can allow the bolt after impact to jump off surfaces towards targets, even allowing the user to arc bolts between multiple targets. Design has the potential to be even further improved. Ongoing. Hmm. Shielded body overcharging. Increase single shot strength. By increasing the number of accumulators and introducing a gradual power transfer system, a greater charge can be stored, allowing for a much stronger bolt, provided the user allows the accumulators to reach full capacity. The charging system does, em does limit the user from discharging the weapon at as high a rate as standard and uses more microfusion energy, but this body modification should prove effective for a Sniper type weapon configuration. Success. Provide a solution for non lethal target subjugation. An underlying prod with a variable power draw provides the user with a stun bayonet allowing them to par paralyze and incapacitate targets. The prod is such that it only draws power when contacting a surface. Just be sure to switch it off when you go to holster your weapon. Yeah. I bet. Tesla baton. Provide a standalone variant of 1539 777-1253K to be used independently of lair weaponry. By adding a hilt and protective guard, as well as integrating a... a what? A breeder power cell? Operators can make use of the standalone stun baton 
to more easily ensure compliance as they subdue rogue synths out in the field, as well as allow them to defend themselves more effectively in close combat scenarios. Hmm. Some nice upgrades. A security breach occurred today in the form of a malfunction in the molecular relay, causing a large crate to arrive uninvitedly. After all the necessary security procedures had taken place, including various scans and having security disassemble it, we found it contained, amongst other objects of dubious scientific worth, a set of what appeared to be prototype weapons the likes of which we had never seen before. The transmission vector recorded by our systems would put the relay origin somewhere to the west, likely as far as the western coast, judging by the signal records, and the crate was entirely unmarked, aside from the letters Big MT and a serial number. This is all the information we seem to have about this rather enigmatic delivery currently. Obviously, the molecular relay has been deactivated for the time being, and we'll have to go through several security reviews in order to avoid any similarly severe branches of security in the future. After some heated debate, it was decided the prototype weapons might hold some worth in terms of study due to their electrolaser-based design, with the potential outcome of being able to arm our surface teams with something similar and or improve their current defensive arms. Scheduled tests of the prototype will commence. Any and all research on Big MT must be kept at a priority level in case of any further molecular relay anomalies. Whoever is responsible likely has access to teleportation and could be a threat to the security of the Institute. Any further events or discovery of information that pertains to this Big MT must be reported directly to the Director. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? The testing and retroengineering phase is complete, and the modified layer design, incorporating our own improvements, has entered production. An electrolaser-based weapon will indeed prove very useful for our surface teams, especially for our coursers' efforts in subjugating rogue synths, as the weapon has been found to be very effective at incapacitation. However, the layer is more costly in terms of resources to produce than our IL-1 model lasers and will likely fulfill a more specialized role. Despite having been proven in the field, higher-ups have deemed the Tempest project's ongoing costs to be too great, even after such a short run. I've been asked to scale down the project and divert resources to the other departments. A number of the currently active layers will be maintained, but otherwise all production of layers is to be halted forthwith. Hmm. I have been assigned to the renewed Project Tempest and authorized by Dr. Lee to pursue further upgrades to the layer design with the intention of improving the performance and efficiency of the weapon in various situations. I can't wait to start experimenting, provided my proposals are accepted. Hmm. Who sent that crate? That's what I want to know. Excuse me, Dr. Lee? Oh, it's you. You're not authorized to be here. Authorized to be where? <laughs> what is this place? You're standing in the Advanced Systems Division, and you, you are not a part of my staff. If you want a tour of the place, why don't you ask Father, seeing that he's apparently given you the keys to the castle? 
Now, can I get back to work? What are you working on? <sighs> There's no getting rid of you, is there? You're obviously here for a reason, and you've already spoiled my experiment, so you might as well spit it out. I've been sent by the Brotherhood of Steel to find you. You don't beat around the bush, I'll give you that. I knew it was just a matter of time before your people would track me down. I've been looking over my shoulder for almost a decade, waiting for them to send someone like you to kill me. I'm only here with good intentions. You have my word. You're giving me your word? Even though we just met? Fine. Hmm. Since Father trusts you, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I might not agree with everything he says, but I know he'd never allow harm to come my way. Say what you came here to say, and then leave me alone. Are you happy here? You'd think, being surrounded by cutting-edge laboratory equipment and some of the greatest minds the world's ever known would be enough. Only problem is the lack of transparency. I don't think we get the full story on everything that occurs down here. What does that have to do with why we're talking? The Brotherhood needs your help, Doctor. Needs my help? Why? They seemed to have everything under control when I left. The Brotherhood valued your presence, and we'd like you to come back. Well, how sweet of them. Tell me something. Why would I possibly want to come crawling back to the Brotherhood? What reason would I have to throw away everything I've accomplished here? The Institute is deceiving you? So now you're just gonna hurl baseless accusations to get what you want? Come on, you can do better than that. Father trusts me, and so should you. He trusts you because you're family. I'm not. I can't just take your word for it. I need more than that. The Brotherhood has always been straight with you. I am getting a bit tired of all the secrets around here. Sometimes I feel like Father isn't being straight with me. Like there are things I'm not supposed to know about. I don't like that. But still, how can I turn my back on all of this? Your work could be instrumental in freeing the Commonwealth. <sighs> you really know how to push my buttons, don't you? You know, I never understood why the Institute was so damn selfish. All those innocent people up there... dying. And here I am, surrounded by technology that could make their lives better. Yet we hide down here and insulate ourselves from everything and everyone. It's not right. It's not right. I'll make my way back to the Brotherhood. But I'm going to have to do it on my own. I can't take any chances being seen with you. Tell whoever sent you that they've just regained the services of Dr. Madison Lee. Now, for the sake of keeping up appearances, let me see that pit boy of yours. I've been told to install a coarser chip in it for you. Father's orders. You're to be given full access, with the ability to relay in and out of the Institute at will. Thank you. I'm sure that'll come in handy. Given that the relay is the only way to access the Institute, handy is something of an understatement. In case the significance is lost on you, you'll be the only one here with that kind of access. If nothing else, it should demonstrate the amount of trust Father has placed in you. Speaking of, I trust our discussion will remain between the two of us. Now, I need to get back to work, and I'm sure you have other things to do.